just missed them. I, yeah. I really quickly want to give Ross a quick shout out. I received a lot of feedback from our listeners that they thought he was a great addition to the show. And Ross, if you're listening, uh, a lot of people out there really appreciate what you <sighs> had to say. So we have to have that fucking asshole on again. I'm afraid so. <laughs> so stay well, tuned. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely tune into that one. That it's. He he said he's available anytime. He's just oh he's full he'll, of shit. He says yeah, but but he's a pain in the ass to get on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, well, I have to check with my. I have a wheelie, you know, difficult FBI job with the grocery store I work at. Yeah. That and I can't be it's a lot of paper work. It's a lot of people. <laughs> All right, I'm pissed off. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got work the next day at 10 a.m., so he can't be out late. And, yeah. Uh, we Maybe we should just take the show to the grocery store. Ooh. There we go. Um, I like a, where your head's a, at. There's a joke there somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I, well, speaking of not knowing shit like Twitter, and I don't know, I don't, I don't even know how to do this shit live. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> but you know that... But that is better, because then... Like I was watching Joe Rogan the other day, mm-hmm. and he had uh, Ari Shafir, you know the the amazing racist on. Sure. Yeah. And I think he was he didn't want to. I guess he pisses a lot, so he was just pissing in a bottle during the show because he didn't want to like break things up. Sure. Oh. So do I, you, I I don't do, really want to do that. Do, I was gonna say you don't want to get a piss bucket or. Uh, I mean, it could be I a thought, trough we could all share. I thought that was in the hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing budget for 2018. Our 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 piss pot. I I thought we were just gonna have invite Ross to be the piss bucket. <laughs> That's no. Well, I don't want to I don't want to get in on any like budgetary disagreements. I apologize if I uh, if I made some things tense. Yeah, you're really messing this up tonight, Sandry. <sighs> you know, um, I think I need help from one of your friends, Bill. I <laughs> did the the Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange, yes, please. S- speaking of. Bottles and piss. I um, yeah. <laughs> as I grab this oh, bottle of thick yellow liquid. Yeah. yeah, man. What a smooth transition. That was good. Right? We got to stick to topic here. Right. Exactly. And when right. when we're on bottles and piss, you just you know you gotta. Yeah. No, but it's I, only professional to stay with the topic. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. What um, so I found it really um, I, I first I found it. I don't know. It was a weird between like a compliment, but also an insult where I run into people from my grammar school and they're like, wait, you're still alive. Wait, you're not in jail. Because I remember being in, I think it was seventh or eighth grade and we were on a trip to a museum and then we were on the trip back and I think they had like free free samples or Kool-Aid at the fucking museum or some shit. And I just totally rated the hell out of that because I was a fat little seventh grader with tits. <laughs> Ooh, sugar water. Yes, please. <laughs> so so on the trip back, I I had a I had I was I was a little s- fucking seventh grader with fat tits with my snap extra snapple after the free Kool-Aid. And I had yeah, I had nowhere to piss. We're in the middle of fucking Chicago <laughs> traffic. And I'm like, all right, guys, I can't hold it in. I can't you guys are gonna you guys already make fun of me for being a <laughs> s- seventh grader with fat tits. I got to just keep a lookout for me. And I pissed in this bottle. Couldn't. I, I need to go a second time. So it hurt like shit. Hold it in. <laughs> pouring it out the window. And then I go again. <laughs> and, and, and and then it's smeared all over the window. So I'm like, fuck, fuck. And then I toss. So, and this is like bumper to bumper, not moving traffic. I toss it out and it lands on a guy's windshield. Cracks open. Pouring all over. <laughs> and this guy, this guy's like... This, this is in 2017 where he'll get out of his car and shoot the whole bus. But but it, this was the 90s, so he's just screaming at this bus, and the bus driver's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? There, what, there's kids on here. There's, yeah, those kids are pissing. You know? and, and, and so the, the best ending to the story is that when when we, you know, everybody parts their ways at eighth grade, and they have their signature book and the yearbook, and every single fucking comment, Phil, you'll always be remembered. Bottle. <laughs> Plus bus equals fill good times or bu- <laughs> you know that's my that's my whole fucking yearbook <laughs> your your uh, your legacy yeah. <laughs> that's great so I'm uh, glad to be pissing on the world for <laughs> less <Lettics. laughs> that that is uh, that is how that goes oh another another funny thing yeah 
I, I don't think I was, I think I mentioned um, when uh, Say Nothing and uh, John and me, mm. when we were younger, we'd always, we didn't have shit to do. So, so we'd always. on each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, wait, is this gay? No, no. Keep, <laughs> keep doing it. No, no but so, so we'd uh, break into random uh, abandoned buildings and abandoned whatever stores and shit. And one time I think um, John wasn't there. I don't remember who I went. I think I went with a random friend to scare the shit out of him or my brother. But we broke into a Dominic's. Or did I tell you about this, the biscuit thing? <laughs> I know the story. I don't know if it made it onto the podcast. Oh, okay, okay. So there was. it was really stupid. It was in the same fucking plaza, but there was a grocery store when Dominic's was still around. I don't know if anybody will know who the f- what the fuck Dominic's is, but they moved from like this, the eastern end to the southern end. It was in this corner. They just moved the store over, so they kept a lot of the old shit or the stuff that can go bad or that, or that can't go bad in the old store. So we break in there. We find this, you know those biscuit cans where you, you got to smack hit them? them and they, yeah. And they pop out, yeah. Well, for the bakery, they, they had a 50-gallon sealed drum of dough. And I'm just like, oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I look at my friend and I say, you know what would be really cool? We should, like, make a car-sized huge <laughs> piece of bread to eat. <laughs> so we just set it on fire. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then it explodes because how the fuck is a seven-year-old going to pick up a 50-gallon barrel of dough? And then, and then we just look like the doughboy just sharded <laughs> all over us. So you have pieces of dough. And then I come home and, yes, Philip, where were you? Uh, we were just hanging out and doing. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you are a weird kid because you, you got fucking dough all over you. <laughs> uh, uh, don't turn on the TV. In other right. news, yeah. <laughs> all right, the Great Biscuit Bandit mystery has been solved. Yep. That's, uh, that was the Doughboy's sister books, yeah. st- stuffed in there, man. <laughs> Someone just reopened a file on you. <laughs> hey, I knew it. I knew it was that fucking kid that threw that bottle of piss at that bus. It had to have been him. Somehow those are connected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, some officer is put on desk duty because of his crazy conspiracy theory. He's just right. been vindicated because of this. He's got the whiteboard. You're like, no, I uh, knew it. Yeah, all the right. all the like uh, the the little pieces of yarn attaching right, yeah. photos and like maps to but shit. What does it mean? <laughs> the bis- does it all mean? The biscuit like, capo. Piss bucket. <laughs> How do we get from from dough to piss? <laughs> I don't and know. The, and then, and then the you know, the the uh, what, what do you call the great ending? They just put my picture at the top. The biscuit capo, <laughs> Philip, piss bottle Lysaki. <laughs> <laughs> He's got torn out pieces from that yearbook with, right. all, the, with all the writing, uh, the signatures. This guy's good. I couldn't get prints on it. <laughs> I uh. All right. Are you gonna cooperate? Because <laughs> we, we we can get you unlimited <laughs> uh, unlimited biscuits for life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a whole car sized biscuit. To, yeah, to dude, do I, I I don't eat bread anymore. Is, so you're, you so all right. <laughs> we got to question this guy better. Yeah. What's a, what's good cop bad cop for the bread bandit? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Does he bring in like do, do you want do you want some of this dough? You want some of this dough? And then bad cop comes up and starts kneading it really hard. <laughs> Like yeah, you, you want this? We're gonna we're gonna ruin it, make it mushy and sticky. I got your fucking dough head in a vice. <laughs> make it stop. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I want to go home. No, you're here now. <laughs> this is political stuff. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, right? I mean, it takes a, it takes large minds over here. <laughs> That just solving we the need to contact. <laughs> we need to contact somebody who knows his dough politics, like Trump, to be on the next. You know, that yeah. No, we'll get our specialist. We'll get the stinking of biscuit dough on the show. It, it, it looks like he started at this shithole and he went to this shithole. <laughs> Crime solved. It's a, I think that that's uh, that was the theory. That was offensive, right there. I'm sorry, guys. The the abandoned Dominic's was not a shithole. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of good people came from it. Yeah, yeah. and man, they were probably saving that gallon drum of biscuit dough for like a very special occasion. Yeah, I'm gonna be in some biscuit mob museum, right? Oh, we're gonna make special biscuits for the new grand opening. It's gonna be great. Everyone loves biscuits. Someone lost their job, right? 
look, there's a trail of Linda? dough footprints. <laughs> Linda, we always knew you had a thing with the dough. And yeah. Is that, do you feel a lot of guilt about no. what you did? No, no, I think I think that. No, no. no. Give me the fryer, the heart shaped fryer. You stay the fuck away from my dog. All right, all right. (laughs) No, man. uh, I don't. No, did any of you guys ever have a potato launcher growing up? No, no. I I I remember one party in high school where somebody had one, Mm. and I remember it being a perpetual disappointment. Same here. I, it didn't fucking work, right? Yeah, it was like, well, we got it to, we got it to work, but it was just like, we didn't get it to work right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it kind of just like, it was impotent. <laughs> it went, but it didn't. You know, my mine just didn't. I, I think you have to somehow get it super airtight, right, with the PVC mm-hmm. glue, which, which, I, which like it's. It's really hard to do, especially as like a kid, like thinking uh, all the way through and getting all the caulking done properly. And yeah, I do. Speaking speaking of that fucking psycho who who wants me to own a gun and a Ford truck, he's like, man, I I used to shoot bunny rabbits with my potato launcher. Yeah, that's you, that's uh, some like psychopath shit right there. Yeah, how do you, how do you, like, sh- how do you like, like attacking small animals? That 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 wouldn't even. That is such a bullshit story. How the fuck do you aim? L- l- like the, l- this guy I can is, is bitching at me for not having a Ford truck, but somehow he has the intricate calculations to measure wind against potato velocity, <laughs> <laughs> and then times a, a bunny rabbit. Oh, oh, you know, maybe we should be listening to him. Maybe he's a genius. Yeah, maybe he's misunderstood. Uh, do you remember Scott Deering, Phil? I remember that name. When, when, I bet you if I saw him, and when you tell me a story about him, I'll, I'll know who you're talking about. So he's since passed, so the likelihood of you seeing him, uh, kind of small, but... I he, saw him, man. I saw him. Um, I remember him now that, in my dream. That you, no. you, didn't, no. you didn't pay the GoFundMe enough, so oh. he came to haunt you. Um, so he lived across the street <laughs> from our middle school. And my friends and I were walking around, and he was out in his garage, and he shouts, Hey, you guys want to see something cool? And we get closer, and he realizes, Oh, shit, it's Bill, Zach, and Monica, or whoever we were with at the time. And we're like, Wait, dude, you were just shouting at strangers to come into your garage? Like, that's weird. And he's like, Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Mm. And he had made a golf ball cannon, which I assume is... more dangerous than a potato cannon. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And he was just launching it at the it middle would, school. It, <laughs> it would make golf a lot more cooler sport. Oh, yeah. It would. Shoot full, the full fucking contact. Yeah. Yeah. And that shit was cool and it worked like nobody's business. But after like two rounds fired, we were like, all right, we're, we're going to start aiming that at us. Yeah, we're we're going to go, buddy. You you have fun in your garage. It's like that uh, that one kid. Who, and this is this is a real story. Um there was some kid, and I think it was somewhere south. Like is Louisiana, this a real story? So this is a real story. Okay. That built a nuclear reactor in his garage and was, like, arrested by, by like, the DOD because you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't, you can't, like, you can't just fucking build a nuclear reactor. And this kid was I, just like... I was, the, I was bored and I knew, I knew how to do it. It's like, what the fuck? They just arrest him. I yeah. roll the nickels. <laughs> I deal the cars. <laughs> I got a motorcycle and a sleeping bag. What do I need a job for? <laughs> no, no, I have a nuclear reactor in my garage. <laughs> Prepare no for the race war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that was another quote that this fucking psycho. <laughs> Did he not? Uh, he said, "Prepare for the race war." He told me that. Yeah. Ah. Uh. And then I and then I told him I'm like, okay, Uncle Chuck Manson. Never. And, and, and then and he's like, no, I'm being fucking serious, man. Ooh, ooh, can I can I go off of Charles Manson real quick? Yeah, by all means. Um, can uh, I see the orange yellow? Re- it's in front of you. Yep. Oh, Wait, of course. It no, is. not Next that one. one. There you go. Um. So, I I think I told you this, Bill, and I blame you for this. Um. <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> so I was introduced to the musical stylings of of uh, the late. Charles Manson via my friend Bill here, um, who is a huge fan and uh, has since converted me. And you actually uh, like it? Oh 
God, no! It's uh, it's horrifying. What? But it, but it is interesting because it is it is like a snapshot into the mind of a man ba- of a uh, madman. Yeah. Look but at your game, girl. Is a great song. And I chose not to play the good <laughs> ones for you. I chose to the, play the deliberately dude, there's the deliberately terrifying ones. ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I there, know. I've listened. Th- I've listened to them all, and I know. I know which are which. But I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, with the beautiful and well known song "Garbage Dump." Mm-hmm. Um, well, as I was saying earlier, I was in Canada not too long ago, and uh, my roommate, with Frenchman. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, my roommate get out of here. You're uses not Charles my Manson. Spotify to uh, play music throughout our whole apartment through the the speaker system. What he didn't know is that I can control the music that goes on there from anywhere in the world. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, he listened to Garbage Dump about 10 times in one day to the point where uh, he became so infuriated that he kept blowing my phone up because (laughs) every time he would put a new song on, I would queue up Garbage Dump (laughs) next. (laughs) So you had a lot to do so in he, Canada. He's he's scarred with that, and I still do it to him from time to time. He freaks the fuck out. <laughs> like it, it's not a joke to him anymore. <laughs> no, that, you know that could be really mean. I mean, what if what if you're like, yeah, take this acid leftover while I go on vacation? No, I wouldn't. And well, then and then, no, and I, and then I just, would never do that to him. I just kept hearing garbage to him. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. It said it was fucking you know Led Zeppelin or or you know fucking rush you know at this point that might happen because it's so like i feel like he does have a little bit of paranoia now every time i'm out of the house and he's <laughs> listening to the spotify yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty sure I, I i i did feel a little bit bad about this but i'm pretty sure he was trying to uh to have sex with a girl that was over and, and they were listening to some music and i definitely <laughs> switched Ex- that <laughs> shit <laughs> as, as as mean as that is um <laughs> kelly's brother so gavin's uncle um, he likes to, we, we like to toughen Gavin up, teach him the world of busting balls. So, um, Gavin would always get mad when, um, have you guys ever, uh, th- I, I don't know what it is. It's like a game. It's, it's a song that's supposed to make fun of like preteen gamer kids who don't do shit. And it's just like, just want to play video games. Just want to. Th- that's the chorus, and it's it's, mm. and, and then the verses are just like I just sit around do nothing at all, complain at my parents because they want me to go out, and then it's just <laughs> it's it's really <laughs> fucking stupid. They well don't they candy. don't give me candy, so what can I do? <laughs> just want to play video game. And for the longest time, when Kelly was living with her parents, the the how ironic cuz cuz the brother he's a huge fucking gamer and still in well I think he's still in play he would live in the basement and he'd chromecast that song on the upstairs TV whenever Gavin would watch TV <laughs> <laughs> so Gavin fucking hates that song <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh that that'll teach him uh, some lessons down the road yeah or you know just like fuck him up forever one yeah. of those two it's one of those two yeah Speaking of, um, I think you mentioned, uh, it reminded me of kind of a pretty funny story of how you mentioned oh, s- that Scott Deering has passed. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother's going to hate me for this, but here, here's, here's kind of where I don't, and I'm going to tell you guys the story because I want to know if I'm crossing the line with, I thought this would be funny if, oh, I don't know what was that, but God. that was Scott Deering. He's like, don't fucking talk <laughs> about me, man. <laughs> No, but yeah, my brother's gonna hit me about this. But uh, he had a friend. Did you? Um, well, it's good. I don't remember what his name was, <laughs> but maybe maybe that's why I don't remember. That motherfucker came in here. Yeah, it just no. wiped it from your fucking mind. No, but uh, for for the, for anybody who listens to the podcast, not the video, the the lights just went out randomly and went back on. But yeah, any <laughs> a, a, anyways, he had this friend who something happened. He. Fuck, I don't know what his name was, but he had a friend in his grade who he was in some horrible, horrible accident, and he was in the middle of high school, I think. No, no, he was just starting high school, and he was in some, I don't know if it was a car accident or whatever. He he lost all feeling from waist down. He was going to be like in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, and he uh, passed away. And oh, no, he didn't. He he was he was in a wheelchair, and he went to he. His parents were gonna pay for all his college and all this shit, but he was just so fucking depressed. He's like, 
I can't even get laid when I'm just going to high school and want to get fucking laid and all this. So he, he fucking killed himself and I didn't, and, and my brother's telling me about this and I'm like, I, I, I kind of wanted to, I don't know, cheer him up or have some comic relief. So I, I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, that's kind of shitty. Did he, I mean, I, I could still maybe find some fun being in a wheelchair. I mean, I wouldn't call it the end of the world. It was like those fucking, those guys, the Lithuanian guys, you're in it. Your life is yeah. shit, you know, but, but I, I think you could still live with a wheelchair. So I just wanted to humor up and I go, well, dude, you could probably do some badass fucking tricks on that wheelchair in the skate park. And my brother got really offended by that. And then unfortunately I got him even more mad because I got really stoned that night and I wanted to see if there is professional wheelchair tr- tricksters. <laughs> and? Um, and, dude, the only thing I could find online, there was a person who, like, matched a video. Uh, it, it was a whole, you know that first level in Tony Hawk 1? Warehouse? Yes. Where, where you drop in and it's in, in that indoor dark warehouse. Uh, yeah, I know exactly. And you go off the ramp right. and you break through the glass. <laughs> yeah, and, to get the, yeah. To get the did you, did you see? Yes. Did, you see the, did you see the video? No, I haven't it's, seen the video it's, of that, it's, but it's, I, it's I just, remember that game. It's a, it's really shitty clip, different pictures of Stephen Hawking doing like a 900, <laughs> <laughs> and then like a backflip. And it's just like, and, and, and while he's in the air, he's like, Oh yes, bonus. <laughs> <laughs> now I am grinding. <laughs> did they have Goldfinger playing in the background? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they did. So here I am. Is that what it? Yeah, doing everything <laughs> I can. Not at all because I am. That was a great game. I'm a Superman. And you always knew which one it was because the cartridge was blue. <laughs> and uh, I always thought that was a, that was uh, in good taste. Sure. Yeah. It's the same thing with like, the yellow. Donkey Kong, yellow Donkey Kong, and then Goldeneye was a gold cartridge, or some of them were limited release. Right? Wasn't wasn't Turok or Zelda green? Yeah, one of them. I know there was a green one, and I think there's a red one too, but I don't know what the red one was. Wait, I think Wave Racer was blue. Maybe Wave Racer was blue. I don't. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of what, what the hell am I thinking of? I don't know. All I know is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. We need to keep <laughs> this topic of colored cartridges, okay? So keep it going, guys. All right. Um, <laughs> for all of our listeners out there, we're referring to uh, an old game system called the Nintendo 64, and it had game cartridges that you would physically place in the top of the console, and most of them came as like a very sterile gray color, but sometimes the manufacturers would... Go out on a limb and add color. Spice it up. Yeah. This was this was this is so old. They used to. It was not offensive to call those cartridges colored. <laughs> so um, and we did separate them from yes. the rest of the, the gray ones. Uh, but but in they good, were all treated good, equally. Well, the uh, separate I think but equal. The, the, yeah, the colored ones were actually better because they were limited. So we actually treated them better. So they were definitely the minority of the yeah game console yes world. Just like well. I think it's time to take a break. This is getting too real right here. Oh, right. <laughs> and on that uplifting <laughs> note, <laughs> that, as we mentioned oh, earlier. Racism lives. Yay. That, that, uh, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Thank you, everyone, for watching us and for hopefully not judging us too harshly for the vile <laughs> shit that comes out of our mouths. Yeah. Um, actually, before we go on a break, I'm going to tell a story. Uh on Friday, I was leaving work and I was talking with one of my coworkers, and he asked, do you have big plans for the weekend? And I said, yeah, kind of, on Saturday, recording another episode of my podcast. And he said, oh, yeah, I heard someone talking about that. What's uh, what's your podcast like? And whenever people ask me that, I always just flat out tell them, like, oh, it's awful. Like, I, d- I don't want you listening to it. What? <laughs> Let me finish. I got oh, to my, no, I talk to my <laughs> agent about booking me on this. Well, yeah, I know your agent fucked up. Uh, And it's like, no, it can't be that bad. And I said, well, last episode I got our friend who's a little slower uh, to sing and I made really, like, uh, distasteful comments about his family members. And that's just, uh, that's really what the podcast is about. So so if you're into that sort of thing, and he's like, no, 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 thank you. Uh, (laughs) And on that uplifting note, we'll be right back. (laughs) 
Es nest nam aitin stisen.